Hello, so today we are going to talk about March of a Marionette by Charles Gounod. Now this piece was written by Charles Gounod originally for orchestra. So what happened is someone took the melody and transcribed it for a bassoon solo, but that's not how it was originally written. So in order to learn the piece, I highly recommend listening to this online or in any other form you can get and um, getting the feel of how it sounds. Now, just a heads up, when you do look for it, there's a slight title change because it's actually the Funeral March of a Marionette, um, which is a strange title because it doesn't feel like a funeral march. Normally you'd think of it being lyrical and slow and sad, but instead this is kind of bouncy and quirky and cutesy almost. Um, and that's possibly because this is about a toy. A marionette is a doll on strings. So definitely take a listen to this so that you can get an idea of how this feel uh, is supposed to be portrayed. In the meantime, we're going to talk about two specific things for this particular piece on our instrument. One is dynamic contrast and the troubles that may come up with those. And two is the use of accents in our high range. This piece has a lot of dynamic contrast. We start mezzo piano and then later we have a forte to piano, forte to piano within a measure. And then even later in 48, we have fortissimo to piano. So we have a lot of dynamics that we need to accurately portray without having any issues. In the forte range, we might have an issue of overblowing the note, playing so loud that we may end up going out of tune. Our intonation is kind of wonky that way. Our timbre, our tone quality, maybe go really nasally and kind of nasty sounding. And then uh, in addition, potentially we may overblow, overblow to create a completely different note. So when we play forte, we have to try to figure out the amount of control we need for our particular reed and our instrument. So you want to test this out by just going for it and then reining in the control. When I say control, that means maybe not as fast of an airstream, maybe a little bit more embouchure that's firm, um, and then not just going for it. I'm going to give you an example of what a solid forte might sound like and then one that has absolute, I'm just letting loose and seeing what happens. Or no control. So you can hear the difference, even just the sound of it projecting on the computer, I'm sure it went a lot louder. So yes, it was definitely more forte, but it didn't necessarily have the same tone quality. Some of the notes were a little strange. You may not even be able to sing the said notes. So make sure when you're playing loud that it still sounds good. On the flip side, piano has an issue with the notes stopping just all together. Our double reeds need a good airstream in order to keep vibrating. And if we don't use a solid airstream and just kind of give up and, and 
doesn't stop, it will stop. The note will stop as well. So when you're thinking of this piece, even if you're playing quietly, you don't want to back off on your airstream and just make it cease to exist. Instead, you want to think of a constant, subtle airstream, more of a instead of a so it's still there. You can still hear it, and it's constant, and you still have that pressure here. And the way you can help yourself think about that is think about the phrase. Rather than going da 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 <laughs> which may cause the notes not to speak because you're not giving enough airstream. Instead, <laughs> think of it da 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 So think of it in a longer version. And that will help with the airstream. You also wanna keep a nice tight stomach here, diaphragm, and just keep that pushing all the way through. And then you have to pair that up with a nice tongue. You don't wanna to be too light on the tongue or the note doesn't speak. So, Cobb was thinking of a long airstream. And even though I was tonguing and I had a little bit of a rest in between, I wasn't breaking up the melody into a bunch of little chunks. So be careful of these two extremes, the forte and the piano on our instrument, because they each come with a certain type of challenge. And the next thing, speaking of challenging, is the accents. We have accents here on our high D, F, A, and G. And when we accent, similar to the forte, we want to make sure it is controlled. If we just tongue the reed, the reed can respond in a bunch of funky ways, but in reality, it just doesn't like that heavy, heavy tongue. So the accent may come out just like I did with the forte, uncontrolled. Intonation issues, tone quality issues, just a bunch of issues. So instead, you want to use a combination of tongue and air to help create a solid, more oof sound. There seems to be a lot of air going on today. Well, that's needed in this piece. So I like to think of it as if you're gonna blow something off of you know, somebody's shoulder really quickly, a, let's say it had like a fuzzy and you're just kind of getting it off. That fast, quick airstream, think of it that way, and then add the tongue to it. Think of accenting with that. It's a combination of air and tongue, not just the tongue. So for instance, if I were to want to do accents in this area around, I think it's 12, if I did that with just tongue alone, this is what it would sound like. No air support, just squatted it out. So you do need the air and tongue combination in order to get these accents to come out firmly, but still sound like the note that you're playing. So. Just as a review, there are two main things you want to focus on in March of a Marionette. The dynamic contrast, you definitely want to go for it. Don't be shy, give it a shot. But you want to make sure it's still controlled. And the way you can do this is change up your read, see which one responds to you better when it comes to this, which one can help you show those dynamic ranges with a little less aggravation. If it's a little easier to play, good, because that means you can control it. And then the other thing we're talking about was the accents. So make sure you use both your tongue and your airstream in order to create that accented tone. Don't just rely on your tongue because you'll end up coming up with a similar issue as playing forte, which is the note will sound out of tune or bad or nasally. So make sure you use both of these. Um, so practice the dynamics, practice the accents, it's okay to give it a shot in a practice room to go all out just to see what it sounds like and then slowly start controlling with your embouchure, slowly start controlling with your air and opening up the back of the throat, the bullfrog that I mentioned in one of my other, my other videos um, so that you have absolute control over this piece and it still sounds fun and cutesy and like a little toy that's marching down the road. Alright, so thank you and good luck practicing. <laughs>